For over a hundred years, the Gunter and the St. Anthony have watched guests come and go. But in 1965, a manhunt, a bizarre murder-suicide, a missing person, and one man's brief stay at these two hotels would leave a city in shock and supposedly leave a paranormal trace of himself and his victim behind. The bizarre story of Walter Emmerich is next on The Ghost Discovery. Nineteen oh nine saw San Antonio grow from a bustling market town to the largest city in the state of Texas. Local businesses, industry, and the influx of visitors from the new railroad transformed the city. It was in this boom at the turn of the century that the Gunter Hotel and the St. Anthony Hotel opened for business. The St. Anthony is regarded as the first luxury hotel in San Antonio. In the early 1900s, it offered guests 430 rooms, complete with a telephone, automatic lights, and a lounge and bar. Two blocks away from the St. Anthony, the Gunter Hotel opened its doors for the first time in 1909 as well. Originally named the Vance Hotel, the Gunter served as a military headquarters and barracks during the Mexican-American War of 1846 to 1847. Celebrities, royalty, musicians, and wealthy business owners all stayed at the Gunter and the St. Anthony. Robert Johnson recorded several famous album tracks at the Gunter Hotel. Both the Gunter and the St. Anthony Hotels have reports of supposed paranormal activity throughout the years. Guests and staff say they have felt a cold spot here and there, or have seen shadows at the end of the hallways but the bloody scene that played out in 1965 is the most reported activity in these two hotels. Walter Audley Emmerich was born May 24, 1926 in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Having a seemingly average American family growing up, Walter joined the military where he was awarded the Purple Heart for his service in the South Pacific. Later, he was honorably discharged from both the Navy and the Air Force. After his service in the military, Walter had a hard time staying out of trouble with the law. In 1960, he was sentenced and given probation for, quote, swindling. He violated his probation shortly thereafter and was sent to Huntsville, Texas to serve his sentence. After serving part of his sentence, he was granted early parole and wound up arrested again in Dallas for writing hot checks. This time he was given a five-year sentence. Walter Emmerich's days leading up to the fatal event in San Antonio were mainly spent in downtown bars and shops. According to some he had come into contact with, Walter was seen with several different women. Police later interviewed these women who all said Walter was a kind and easygoing person. He even gave them boxes of chocolates and flowers when they met him. On February 3rd, Walter visited a gift shop in the Alamo Plaza and purchased a suitcase. He bought the suitcase using a check he had stolen from his stepfather. Later he went to a deli on the corner of Commerce Street and used another stolen check. On February 6th, Walter Emmerich checked into the Gunter Hotel under the name of Albert Knox. He asked for room 636. Witnesses who were staying at the Gunter Hotel at the time reported seeing Emmerich often, casually coming and going, seemingly in good spirits. They also remembered seeing him on several occasions, accompanied by an attractive blonde woman on Monday, February 8th, between 3 and 5 p.m., the same blonde woman who had frequently been seen with Emmerich for the past few days arrived at the Gunter Hotel to visit him in room 636. Before her shift ended on the morning of February 9th, Maria Guerrero 
the maid on duty at the time, decided to check the sixth floor one last time and tidy up any rooms that had recently been occupied. When she came to room 636, she noticed that the Do Not Disturb sign was still hanging on the door. Having cleaned most of the rooms on the sixth floor, Maria decided to open the door and peek inside, asking if anybody needed any service. Walter Emmerich stood in the middle of the room, covered in blood. Blood was flung all over the walls and puddled on the floor and the bed. Maria stood in the doorway and let out a scream. Emmerich looked at her, and with a blood-soaked hand, he slowly raised his finger to his lips and calmly gave a Maria slammed the door and attempted to lock it from the outside. Maria ran through the hallway hoping to find her co-workers for help. Inside room 636, after being unexpectedly interrupted, Walter Emmerich packed his bags, washed himself off, and changed his clothes. Blood smeared from the bed to the bathroom in large crimson streaks that ended on the cold white tile. In the bathtub, the red rings around the inside wall were what was left of his attempt to dispose of what he had done down the drain, possibly flush down the toilet as well and wash down the sink. Two saleswomen at the local Sears later identified Emmerich to the police. They both recounted helping Emmerich decide on purchasing a large meat grinder. He left without buying it, but the encounter had stuck with both of the saleswomen. When police arrived at the Gunter Hotel, they found room 636 as Maria had described. They discovered clumps of long, blonde hair soaked in blood. Police examined empty wine bottles and several types of cheese they recognized from the local deli. They noticed the bed sheet was missing, and while examining the walls, they could see a small caliber bullet hole. A suitcase with a receipt from a gift shop on Alamo Plaza was the most significant evidence found. Following the leads they had, it was determined that the same man who had purchased the suitcase and the food from the deli was Walter Emmerich. San Antonio police quickly began a statewide manhunt and spread the description of the suspect. Detectives used Emmerich's past fingerprints and matched those found at the Gunter Hotel. As the local and state police released their description of the suspect in the grisly crime, two blocks away, Robert Ashley was checking in at the St. Anthony Hotel. Emmerich insisted on the same room, 636 and became visibly upset when the front desk staff told him it was occupied. Reluctantly, Emmerich chose 536 instead. Hours later, as the San Antonio police were fanning out across the city, two police officers were approached by a security guard working at the St. Anthony Hotel. He described an odd encounter with a man named Robert Ashley, who would become belligerent after maids asked if he would like his room cleaned the suspicious encounter along with the description of the Gunter suspect was enough to alert the security guard. Detectives and officers approached room 536 at the St. Anthony. They brought along the security guard, who was holding a large set of keys. Rather than knock on the door first, the police wanted to take the suspect by surprise. With a nervous hand, the security guard attempted to put the key in the keyhole but as he did, he rattled the large bundle of keys on the door. Before police could open the door, Emmerich had ended his life by putting a 22 caliber pistol to his head and shooting himself. He was laid to rest in a local cemetery without military honors. For weeks after Walter Emmerich's death, police, city workers, and volunteers searched for clues to the brutal crime that had been committed at the Gunter Hotel. The San Antonio River was dragged in hopes of recovering a body. Parked cars, construction sites, sewers, and dumpsters were all searched in an attempt to find the missing blonde woman's remains. No evidence was ever recovered, however. In room 536 of the St. Anthony, 
a cigarette lighter with the initials C.A.R. was found. Later, it was determined that the lighter belonged to a woman who was very much alive. More questions than answers still remain. Why would a seemingly friendly and nonviolent person suddenly be driven not only to murder, but to carry out the deed of dismemberment in such a short period of time? Why was room 636 so important? If the killer attempted to conceal the evidence, why check into a hotel only two blocks away? Of all the questions that remain, the most crucial is, where is the mysterious blonde woman's remains? Throughout the years, following the strange events that took place, guests and staff have reported paranormal activity in both hotels. Two hotels, bound by a grim and mysterious incident caused by a man who suddenly went mad with rage or possibly concealed devious hidden desires. And both hotels, claiming paranormal activity in and around where both scenes took place. Old hotels are rich with the residual energy of people who check in over the years. Energy released has the ability to linger in the walls and objects all around us. The next time you find yourself in San Antonio, Texas, stay in the historic Gunter or San Anthony hotels. Order the Walter Emmerich drink at the bar. Both hotels are full of history and charm, but lingering just underneath the surface, a more darker and mysterious past resides. Hey there, I'm Alex. If you like this content and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss what comes next. And don't forget to follow The Ghost Discover on Spotify, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next time.